Hello and welcome to episode three of Iron Edda Reforged season one in the bubble. I am Tracy, your host, the game designer, narrator, sort of, because that role is kind of fading away at this point in time, which is excellent. And I am joined, as always, by DJ and B and Danny. DJ, why don't you kick us off? Tell the folks who you are and where they can find you. Hello, everybody. Big B's here. You can catch me on my stream, Big underscore B's, uh, Monday to every day, uh, like weekdays other than Wednesday, uh, from noon to two, playing all sorts of crazy games and random streams at night where you can watch me get scared. It's fun. It's fine. It's fine. 
Um, you can also uh, follow me on Twitter at BigBees underscore, where I retweet almost everything that comes by me because um, I love people and I love supporting. So, yeah, I will be playing one. Oh, well, the scene we're going in, I'll be playing my uh, fantastic chef man who cares about everybody's well-being and wants to know, have you eaten a day? All right. And next, Danny, tell the people. What's up, y'all? My name is Danny. You can find me all over the internet at Brutal Dan. That's Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok mostly. Uh, I'm the community manager for Roll20, and I'm super excited to play Walnut Fur Metal today. Walnut Fur Metal is part of the Clan Horse, and they are a little robot uh, items dealer. Um they 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 uh, they're a little shifty and they're excited to see what they can find in the this this little place. Uh, their motives are just to help the the kids. They help run an orphanage, and that's pretty much it. So we'll see we'll see how this scene plays out. <laughs> and B. All these casual all these characters are talked about so casual, but they are in fact absolutely wild. Um, <laughs> So to continue the trend, um, hello, I'm your non-binary busy B. You can find me on Twitter is at B underscore Zelda. Um, I am joining you today playing Lady Lizard at the moment. And they are, um, you know, just the leader of the bubble. No big deal. They don't only hold all of the power and hold all of the secrets of this beautiful skull that has been submerged underwater in which a community of individuals have to reside. Not, um, not a lot of pressure to uh, hold up, but this... Lady Lizard of the Dragon Clan, you know, in touch with their emotions, really looking to care for others in the most, I guess, diplomatic way possible. Lady Lizard, I think we're going to learn a lot about this person as um, we find out what happens in this little diner. And I'm Tracy Barnett. I am, as I said, your narrator and the game designer of Iron Edit Reforged, and you can find me anywhere at the other Tracy. Today, I will be playing Farwell Bane's daughter. That's right, I am playing right now. At the end of the last session, we transitioned me away from the role of narrator as we are all getting more comfortable with the, the procedures of how an Edic Engine game works. And uh, today, we are going to be picking up with our heroes venturing into this space that's going to come up in the middle here. It is Spearson's Pastries. And the scene is the RPB Connection Meetup. Uh, one of the characters, I'm struggling to remember who at this point in time, knows, ah, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, Wal- uh, nope, nope, Haskell, there we go, uh, knows an RPB agent or former RPB agent, uh, that's the Realms Police Bureau, for those of you who have not yet heard the podcast. And we are meeting with them at this diner that smells fantastic as we are are walking up towards it uh the lighting inside <laughs> is is very different than outside outside is very neon and garish and in here it is it's very yellow and muted uh and the the walk up was was kind of a big deal for the four of us because we're from this small tight-knit community and this is basically like kind of like growing up in a town of 3,500 people like i did and going to new york city for the first time Right. Mm -hmm. It's all bright. There's so many people. Most of them don't really give a shit if you're around them or not. They're just trying to get where they're going. And uh, that was we we took in the the sights and the sounds and the sensory information of Jotunheim as we were traveling toward Spearson's Pastries. So as the four of us walk in this door, uh, we have some information about this place already, but I would like each of us to provide a detail for Spearson's Pastries. Uh, that we are going to be uh, keeping in mind and using as we as we head into this scene. I can start. Go Please. For it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'd say the first detail is that uh, there's a a. Uh, I've seen it in both delis and uh, bakeries where they have that big glass counter that displays all the uh, different assortment of pastries that they make there. And they have one that just is just obscenely long. Okay. 
Um, I think on that long, um, I don't know what the proper term for it is, uh, display case. Yeah. Um, we see dead in the center, like dead center, um, there is one old fashioned like analog sign. Um, I think some poor fool like wrote it by hand mm -hmm. that says, if you can eat this entire cake in under 15 minutes, you get it for free. The cake otherwise costs like a hefty sum. It's like a, a eight layered a multi icing um, abomination. Uh, and it's dead center and all, you know, it's just kind of like one of those like old fashioned challenges. Like back in the day, you used to have those, um, you go to the restaurant, like if you could eat this burger, you got it for free. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like, you know, the diner uh, version of it. And it's like uh, free coffees for your table too, if you succeed. <laughs> well, shoot, now I want cake for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm thinking um, the walls, kind of like any other diner, there's kind of like tchotchkes and knickknacks all over the walls. Some of them seem pretty in the the norm of like road signs and neon signs. But there's also like these weird, maybe artifact looking things. We don't know if they're artifacts, but they're kind of old. Some of them might be old weapons. Some some of them might be old armor pieces, but they're all kind of broken off and they're just kind of like scattered around. Uh, How the, thick is the, the layer of dust on them? Uh, pretty thick. Like yeah. this has, yeah, the decor has been put up like right when it was built and no one's <laughs> dusted it since. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I love that, especially considering uh, one of the, the goals that I have in mind for this scene. So that's going to be, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then I'm going to put in that there is a, actually, you know, it might be more fun if there's not a clandestine meeting room in the back, if we're just doing this meet, like, I like a re reservoir dog style, right? Yeah. Like we're just going to be at the diner table with the camera, like just cutting from face to face to face to face. Um, so that means that, uh, my detail is that there's going to be um, whatever in Jotunheim uh, passes for classic rock on an old analog jukebox. Yes. Right? Oh, nice. um, it doesn't take quarters anymore, but you can like go to the counter and you can like tap your 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 com or whatever and get. Uh, tokens dispensed so you actually oh have to goodness. feed the the jukebox tokens uh to get uh to get it to play songs but it's i mean there's a very I, i'm feeling a whole lot of like 1950s vibes from this but in mm. cyberpunk <laughs> mm -hmm. great um and uh, dj what is the name of the rpb agent that we're going to be meeting with um wow yeah uh, two seconds. I am not looking up a name generator. Absolutely um, not. Everyone that would be ever crazy. can just rattle names off the top of their heads okay. with absolutely no problem. Can <laughs> I be the one person in the universe that can do that? Because I name my people after objects. Danny, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Macaroons. Okay, his name is Macaroon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Macaroon Russell. It's Perfect. There we go. I was going to say, it's Mac A. Rune. Yeah, his name is Mac Rune, and his middle it. name is A. Yeah, and he just go, and he goes by Mac. He's like, yeah. a, he's like a noir cop. There we go. Oh, there Mac you go, Rune. Mac. Mac Russell. Mac dot A. Rune. I encourage and, everybody for that, like, that kind of naming scheme, because possibilities are endless. Very, very good. Um, so, uh, we need details for Mac. Um, and, I love Mac. uh, I'm going to, I'm going to start off with, uh, he is, uh, a street beat agent, uh, not as in the, uh, video game on the Nintendo DS, but in that he <laughs> actually walks a beat around Jotunheim, right? He has a neighborhood oh. that he patrols and he is one of the few people in the RPB who might actually be said to sort of have some connection to the people around like he actually tries to get to know people the way that in theory policing should be mm -hmm. right it should be a community that's looking out for each other not what it currently is in our modern uh late capitalism 
hellscape that we live in. Uh-huh. Uh, so he is still an agent of the RPB. Like he don't get that twisted, but he knows the neighborhood that he is in. Um, he views it through a particular lens, but he knows it. Uh, so that is my that's my detail for Mac. Who wants? I want to say. Yeah, yeah. I want to say Mac also. Uh, Mac's great auntie owns the diner that we're at, so he knows. He 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 has he's has really good connection with it, and his his he might his his auntie might have been the one that wrote the uh the the challenge note that nobody the has sign. ever tackled. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh, I, I like love it. that auntie. Yeah. <laughs> Does she still work here? Like, is she kind of like doddering around, trying to pick up like trays and whatnot? Yeah, she thinks she works there. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's technically retired. Like years ago, exactly. Showing up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm just making a card for her real quick while we're detailing <laughs> Mac. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to complicate things by diverging into another <clears throat> character. But technically, we oh, make God. every person we meet. So I'm just going to whip her out real quick while y'all are uh, uh. detailing Mac. Uh, her name's Gertrude Sven's daughter, just just so everyone's on the same page there. Perfect. Um, well, hmm. So we kind of got a vibe for what Mac is like. Um, personable. Um, a fantastic aunt. Um, you know, so like that kind of tells you that like Mac was probably raised by decent people. So I'm going to detail a little bit of what this person looks like. Yeah. Um, and I I had a dream for some reason that I got like um I'm trying to remember what the style is called. Um it was really popular in the nineties. DJ when I'm you about have to fade. Yes. Like the kid <laughs> like, 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 like like the kid and play thing, but maybe yeah. not as the moment they were like, Who? <laughs> Who? I was like, Yep, that old eraser that... head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I like think a number that two pencil walking what? around the neighborhood. But it is almost like excessively tall. Like he has been grooming it to get like the height. The top of the hair is just a little bit curly. Like the flat top isn't quite as flat at the moment. He might need mm. to go back to his barber. But like he is iconic because you can see him. You can spot him from a distance, this individual. Um, and I like to believe that like maybe they're a little short too. So they're compensating with their hair to add that height. Oh, yeah. Very <laughs> Very good. I'm going to post a link in the chat on Twitch just so everyone can see <laughs> a picture of Kid and Play uh, from the late 90s because uh, that is that high top fade, although I believe yeah. that uh, Max high top is probably yes. higher Three than that. Three times. Yes, but that's, that's If I think of a high top fade, that is immediately who comes to mind. That's because, so perfect. Because I'm, I am a child of the, of, the, of the late 80s and early 90s, so... <laughs> My first thought was Gerald from Hey Arnold. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. Okay, okay. But I couldn't use that as an example because it's yeah. not like it's just I mean, yeah, no, it's thank you for immediately yeah. <laughs> I dropped kid and play on the chat. I think Hey Arnold is more relatable just as <laughs> broadly speaking. So don't have any shame it's about all that. All the right answer. <laughs> All right, DJ, what's the last detail for Mac there? Uh, the last detail is he has an insatiable sweet tooth. All right. That makes sense. Fantastic. Okay, hold on. I got a really, really important question then. Yeah. Real teeth? Does he got any of his real teeth left? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Not all, but yeah. <laughs> Not all, but yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's not all from sweets. He is a, a street cop, yeah. so they've seen some uh, brawls in their time. Um, but I do have another uh, question that needs to be answered about this diner. Mm -hmm. With this challenge, is there a wall of glory? There has to be a wall of glory, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, how many how many faces are up on the wall of glory? Three. Three. Okay. Two of which are still alive. Oh my god. That's impressive. Is there like a date like from like time to time? Like so we like, recognize when they've passed? Uh well they'll update it if they pass. Um oh, okay. but for it's just one person did kind of just 
they don't know if exactly what it was, if it was like old age or if it had to do with the challenge, <laughs> but just to drum up more excitement and, you know, ooh you about it. Die. They're like, yeah, they beat it, but it won in the end. <laughs> Wait, how do you get onto the wall? You have to eat that whole cake. Yeah. Oh. Which is the densest cake ever, ever made. Mm -hmm. And two of them had died because of the no, cake or just one died? died. One died. <laughs> Only one. Yeah. Because of the two cake. Was... No one knows. No one, <laughs> no one knows. knows. Okay. It, it, it could have just been like old Can't age or, you know, <laughs> the diabetes came and took them. No but... autopsy was done. <laughs> yeah. But like they heard about it and they were like, oh, this is terrible. And they were like, but since no one knows exactly. I love All right. This place. Uh, so, uh, just as a, a cap for everyone who is wondering, Gertrude Sven's daughter owns the diner, can't say no to a challenge, and can't bake for shit. Uh, so it's not her cake, right? No, uh, no, it is her cake. <laughs> oh, That's, okay. It's, it's terrible. That's, That's why. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and the Wall of Glory has been conquered by Bruno Kelson, Portress Finnegan, and Cipher nine two five four three. Cypher. Oh, I love them. <laughs> All right. So, uh, where in the diner is Max heading? Because he has a spot, or they have a spot. Oh, yeah. Have we designated? I just assume it's all. Yeah. Where is Max? Yeah, just use any and all for Mac. Thank you. And and, and assume that for for any NPC we create, unless it's important okay. that it be otherwise. Um. Yeah. So she absolutely has a spot. Is it in a corner? I'm picturing, yeah, she's sitting in the corner and there's like a light flickering, like it's not the best lighting. Yes. But the rest the rest of the diner looks perfectly fine and then like the camera <laughs> yeah. shifts and it's just like he's sitting over there just like <laughs> well, really like it. They chose yeah. yeah, they chose it on purpose for the pure fact of it looks kind of creepy, so mm -hmm. it deters other people from going over there so he can sit down and enjoy his coffee in the morning with, <laughs> you know, a piece of cake or two. As you do. And as we're approaching uh, for this meetup, uh, we need to discuss as players, what's the end goal of this scene? Like, what are we going to be playing toward? And I will say that we haven't really seen the the dice mechanics kick in a whole lot yet, right? We had that one conflict mm -hmm. in the first episode. Yeah. Um, but I, at the end of this, think it would be a lot of fun if this meeting were interrupted by a like armor wearing RPB raid. Like they followed Ooh. Mac here and they know Mac is meeting with us. Ooh, yeah. In addition yeah. to whatever information we're going to get about, about this. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yes. Okay. My only request mm -hmm. is that little Gertrude is unharmed. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, in fact, okay, I, I have a feeling that we can easily have Gertrude uh, grabbing some of that weaponry and armor from the wall and absolutely just laying down. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so we've got that. And then we know, as again, as players, that this uh, meeting needs to point us toward Mimir. Right, because mm -hmm. we need to have that sort of agenda point to to head towards taking down a god. So, I think we need to find out why Mimir has targeted the bubble. Yeah, why now? What's changed? Yeah. Um. So, with that in mind, uh, does anyone have any particular yearning to play the part of Mac Russell? I I'm, don't think I pass. can do the justice. Okay. I'm going to pass because I doubt y'all want to see me just talk to myself for uh, <laughs> uh, a little bit. So, okay. Danny, how you feeling? Do you want to take yeah. it? Uh, yeah, I can I can try. I'm, I'm not quite sure their demeanor yet, but yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, right? I'll, I'll take a shot at it. I'm just yeah, like, this, like... This is where the, the, the play to find out happens in this game, right? We know what our goal is. And now we're going to play to find out how we get there. So mm -hmm. let the demeanor flow out of you. You know, you can settle into it. You're only going to be in his skin for a little bit. Maybe, maybe you'll end up coming back to him. It's hard to say. Um, but in the meantime, since you're going to be playing Mac, what does, uh, what does Walnut do sort of during this meeting? That means that Walnut's not talking a whole lot, or you can flip back and forth if you want to. 
a wall that's definitely not like checking out all the the stuff on the wall um trying to pry things off trying to just like throw things into her knapsack oh my gosh um rolling around and again she's on these rollers but she has these different mechanisms that will uh let him go up and down and um probably making friends with gertrude like asking like oh where did you get some of that or like where did that come from so. nice so is, is gertrude doing like the dime tour of the... yeah 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 <laughs> that's fantastic um, they're so like that's... kindred kindred souls like they like they immediately uh <laughs> connected when they came in that's gertrude fantastic so, I lo- so walnut just like zips off to the side and gertrude is like oh yes uh, I'd, I'd love to tell you about this one over here this one is uh this one is hand- handed down to me by my father it's like and immediately it's, it's, it's a Walnut snatches axe. it off the yes! snatches it off the wall. <laughs> and I see like Walnut like grab this battle axe and go, hit whoa! <laughs> yeah. Wal- Walnut is is very cartoon character to me, like in yeah. my brain. I hope that's no, not is that in keeping with Yeah. I'm okay. picturing kind of Wally esque. Uh, very Aww. cutesy, very yeah. Fantastic. Um so while that's happening, the rest of us approach this uh, this table. And uh, Haskell, uh, Mac is your contact, so. So as, uh, you know, always, anytime we, we uh, sit down, it's always across from one another, closest mm-hmm. to the wall. It No rhyme or reason, just it's always been like that. So he sits down, Are slides over. Side? No, no, no. Across from oh. one another. Only him, though. Like, all of us are... Oh, no. You you guys can sit however you wish. I'm just saying, Haskell and, uh, Haskell and Mac always, whenever they meet up, sit down and go as far against the wall as possible. It's just something that naturally evolved over time. Oh. Um, <laughs> so got Haskell's big, big, beefy frame, yeah. like, next to Mac, just like, you know, trench coat wearing street cop. And it's just for a second, it's this tableau of this very large body next to this regular sized body. Well, no, he's across from him. Oh, across from him. No, it's like the, yeah, the table. So they're just both, you know, Haskell's just taking up half the chair, uh, the bench himself, sitting right there. And then across from him is Mac, who's this little person, but above Haskell's head, you can see the high top poking out from behind him. (laughs) It's perfect. Yeah, I think Mac was sitting right in the middle, just doing their regular thing. And then when Haskell sits down without saying a word, he just immediately scoots over to the wall, <laughs> slides them one of the pastries, and just looks up at them. He takes a look at it. It's an apple pastry. It's one of your favorites. Just, I, I, It's fine with me. I'm just wondering. If this is all you've been eating. <laughs> well, I mean, I had cherry pastries. I had peach pastries. I don't know why we got to go through this every single time. And you just start digging through his pockets. You hear out Gertrude from, jerky. from across the... No outside food! If you want to <laughs> eat, order from the menu. Okay. <laughs> Auntie, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's all Haskell. Auntie is me. Oh. How you doing? Is that is that Haskell? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Haskell, you know that you can always bring your treats in here. It's fine. Did mm-hmm. you have any more of those pecan clusters? Yes. I also got that tea you need. I know it tastes terrible, but you need it. And she like, and walks pulls out a little trunk. box oh. and uh, sets it on the side, like like moves it over towards Mac. You know, that that's for uh, for Gertrude. And then he uh, pulls out a little packet. Uh, like, it's wrapped up. And he sli- he already knew he already knew the answer coming in, but he wanted to ask for just that one tiny speck of hope, hoping that Mac has been taking care of themselves. But no, he knows. <laughs> so he slides that prepackaged, uh, just like little array. It's just like uh, uh, jerky cheese, um, this like kale. Uh, it's like a kale and spinach wrap around it <laughs> with like his own kind of like uh kind of like a vinaigrette in the middle so it's just like this this health bar wrap 
that he's made for uh, Mac and just slides it over to him. And then, uh, like, as without breaking eye contact, slides it over, grabs a fork, takes a piece of the pie. Damn, that's good. <laughs> just uh, like old times. The end mm-hmm. of the table, there's a sound that's kind of been uh, in the just next to you, and you realize it's the sound of Lady Lizard's foot tapping impatiently with his arms crossed like around his chest. <sighs> <clears throat> uh, are we done? Has no, are we time to... You, you, you gonna introduce us to your friend here? <clears throat> no, Man. you know, Haskell, uh, does your friend need some tea or something? It sounds like I, her throat is a huh, Don't get me started on what, on what they need. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> They want to get down to business. They have no mm-hmm. uh, sense of 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 uh, uh, niceties and and you know tradition. Niceties. So, we are uh, in an old fashioned diner with the worst lighting. This is already giving me a headache. With uh, these are the people that are probably going to raid our place. Yeah, we need no, to discuss you need business. To, you need to be right careful. Away. We got to be these, careful because Gertrude people... over there. Is just, I mean, has at least killed ten people since we've been here. What? Um, she is just some kind of psycho. Uh, I didn't want to say anything, but just make Haskell. sure not to make eye contact with her because Haskell. she will eat you. You know, I don't leave the bubble very often. You can't do this to me. It is a little old lady, and I trust Mac with my life. We are good here. We are safe. Fine. And Lady Lizard's gonna squeeze in next to Haskell. Um, and that, again, I'm picturing like and that puts that Farnsworth <laughs> next. That was Farwell next to Mac. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Poor Farwell doesn't even get a choice. It's just like, do you? <laughs> there's the open spot. Mac takes that little sandwich bar thing and puts it lengthwise so that there's as much space as possible between uh, him and Farwell. <laughs> Aww. Farwell like notices and like just rolls their neck and uh like does that thing like stretches their shoulders just down and like the table moves a little bit as like the bone bonded flexes out a touch when that happens as 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 Krelg like makes their presence just subtly subtle for a giant known. Max eyes shift uh hasn't really left Haskell much but shift when uh when that happened and looks back and it's like now now Haskell you know you you're supposed to send me at least something when you come all of a sudden you show up with these two what's going on yeah, I only that's... got enough pastries for us well they, they'll be fine they'll be fine I got I got snacks if they're hungry um I got a couple of pecan food. clusters no. if, if it's something but uh the... for food oh, well, it doesn't mean you can't eat while you're here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, the gods are. Uh, not that's what's wrong today. with you. That's why you got. That's why you're so impatient all the time. Cause your blood sugar low. Cause I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. All right. So, just you know, eat, you know what? How about you try and eat that cake? You Par- try and eat that cake. <laughs> Pardon the uh, thing that's going on here on the screen. Uh, I changed my Google Meet subscription, and it had to. I I needed to oh, okay. upgrade it was, so we can extend the call quality. I was like, I don't quality. know what to do. I don't know what to do. Hey, no, guess okay. what? We're back. Hey, right. yay! I've paid Google. We can keep we can keep going. <laughs> we paid the overlords. That's right. <laughs> my God, it, that is the most cyberpunk thing. Like we're in the middle of this of this diner, and suddenly this paywall pops up, or we can't continue <laughs> the conversation. Like it's too real. <laughs> <sighs> so, all right, look, look, Mac. Things aren't right, and I need to know what's going on. Things I haven't heard. been right for a long time. Yeah, I, well, it's starting to it's starting to bleed out into the bowl. And I need to know what's going on. We had somebody. Uh, we we got all this these rumors about a raid coming on, uh, and then after we get these rumors about the raid, then all of a sudden this new gang starts showing up, and someone tried to use a rocket launcher to take out the wall of the bubble. Yeah, the bone so, splinters. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what what what's what's going on? What what's happening, Mac? Talk to me. Well, you know, it when when you kick out a gang from where we are, they have to find somewhere else to go. Uh and it, it, who knows who told them to go to the bubble, but they heard things could be better over there. So uh not that i know or anything but uh there might have been <sighs> some coercion of um coercion? monetary and uh power uh powerful weapons um to be put into the bubble <clears throat> and what? it just keeps eating uh, th- that's our home hold, hold on hold on hold on matt <sighs> what's going on talk to me what is going on with the bubble? Why is all this happening now? What has changed? It's, I I don't know if I'm in, you know, I'm in this job just to help my people and that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. And that's all. So I'm just looking out for my block and I, that's all I can tell you. That that's you're an RPB stooge and all you can tell us. You're, you're working for yourself now. Your god is done. Tear fell. The Panopticon is busted open. So, if you're looking out for your block, they're gonna come for you too. You're not like safe in your corporate shell anymore, bud. Like it's just not, it's not how it's not how it's working. So, if someone is guiding what's left of the RPB, then you gotta know something. If you know. If, if what you even told us so far is true. Come on. Look straight into Haskell. <laughs> Who are these people again? Why did you bring them here? Why couldn't you just come over here and talk to me, Max? <laughs> because this is what Who the situation the demands. Right now, Mac, I need you to hell with everything else going on. To hell with the neighborhood. To hell with the RPB. Look at me. Me. You in me if you can't just tell me for what what can you tell me mac what are you not telling me that that is going on because i know you you're holding something back you know more than what you're saying what is what is is everything and he's just gonna look at him like the raids are coming we can't stop them the bone splinters might just be a distraction, and that's all I'll say. What? Our home is being threatened, and that's all you can say? Ugh. We came all the way out here for this, Haskell? Yeah, we did. So now we know. We don't know the bone anything. Splinters, that... The bone splinters are not the ones you need to be worried about. What? The... Who... Can you give me a time? Please. How much time? They're moving down the line. You probably got four days at best. The RPB have been raiding town after town, breaking in, causing chaos. And they send these gangs, people like the Blown Splinters, just to just to just to say that they're infiltrating, and th- th- there's a bigger cause. And I honestly don't know what it is, but as long as my people are safe, that's all I'm worried about. All right. Um... Thank you. Thank you, just, Mac. Just know. No matter what, I got you. We got you. If they hit here first, y'all know y'all got a place in the bubble. All right? Anything well, I, I'm thinking we should be good because they wouldn't do anything to me, right? <laughs> Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I think the the door absolutely busts open, and 
we now have on our hands an RPB raid. So I am making a new slide. Uh, raid. Yeah, on. <laughs> what does this look like? All right. So what this looks like is we have to decide sort of the uh, the difficulty level of what's coming at us. Right, and we get to decide that as a group. So if this is a bunch of RPB agents sort of acting on their own, then we have a bunch of, of what I call minor enemies in this game, right? They have a single box, so any successful action against them takes them out, right? If we have some moderate enemies, that means they get one box for each of us and they need four successful actions against them to be taken out. And then if we have a major enemy, it requires twice that many. Anything higher than that is usually like a god. So okay. uh, um, he has to duck away real quick. So we'll we'll discuss this while, while they're off camera. I, I don't think it wants to. It's got to be like a hard, hard one. I think uh, I think it's a multitude of easy and then a couple, maybe a few medium because this okay. is this is a raid. And uh, I think I think what's what's happening is they've uh, whoever is in charge and, and dealing in like leading all this uh, insanity has been uh, like keeping an eye on the uh, agents that they know aren't one hundred percent on board, mm -hmm. and so have been watching Mac for a while. And know that uh, I meet up with Mac every, you know, month by monthly, um, and sent enough people to take on Mac and myself. But now we have a few extras here, and they're, you know, a little, little caught off guard, but still made sure they had more than enough to take us out. So that, it's not going to be just yeah. a cakewalk, but you know, they were definitely ill-prepared for the amount of people that are here now. That absolutely makes sense. Danny, does that ring true to you? Yeah, I think it was one of those things, like, <laughs> they didn't think, uh, they didn't think Mac would spill the beans that quickly. Um, and then all of a sudden they were like, all right, we got to stop before, we got to stop it before anything else leaks out. So they had to rush over there. All right. So then that means I think it makes sense. I like things in, in in parody so we've got uh two lieutenants that have four boxes each and then we've got four grunts uh that each have a box does that uh seem reasonable to everybody yep sounds good cool so the way that this works is we all as players get to act first right we get to take all of our actions everyone uh goes when they want to uh and then we sort of maintain that order uh, as we proceed throughout the rounds. And once all of us have gone, we're the ones who decide what the bad guys do, right? So we also get to dictate an action for each of the bad guys. Now, these being lieutenants and grunts, they only get one action each. If it was a major threat or higher, then it would get one action for each of us. Mm, okay. That way, again, there's there's parody. Like if you if you listen to the podcast and heard our fight against the Hand of Tear, oh, yeah. uh, the big the big mech thing, uh, that was where this system sort of came to be. Uh, so they bust in. Uh, you've got six people. The grunts are all wearing you know like riot armor, and the lieutenants have something something special about them. They've got a special weapon. They've got special armor or something. What is it that sets them apart? Um, energy sword, mm. a la Halo Three or any of the original Halos. Hell yes! <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, keep that detail in mind as you're detail okay. as you're noting the actions for the lieutenants. Um, the grunts all have you know riot shields and batons mm -hmm. and and that that sort of thing. Uh, so they bust in. Who's acting first? Let me look at our characters again. <laughs> Mm. I'm cr I'm creating a, a quick little uh, thing for Mac real quick. Okay. A character oh. block. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay. Lady Lizard. She's uh, she's going to try what she believes in. Um, because, you know, as a leader, they have to believe in the power of words. So, like a, a naive, optimistic leader of not a lot of people, 
um lady lizard is going to step out of that booth and like in the middle of like the walkway Mm -hmm. um as soon as kind of like those doors burst in um like the smoke settles and like with his hand up halt (sighs) who (laughs) do you think you are and how dare you enter these premises you will turn around right now and step out of this building (laughs) uh real quick uh danny mag already has details uh we made them in his character block, so you can just pull those up and assign them to ratings. You don't have to to, to redo anything. Um, so, uh, Lady Lizard is trying to order the RPB agents out of the diner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does the difficulty like that sound like? <laughs> impossible. <laughs> uh, so, if it's, uh, if, if it's impossible, it's then... Like, like um, 10. Well, that makes me ask, do you as the player want to fail this action I do. right away and take the control point? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because that's that's one of your options before dice hit the table. Oh, so heck. um so your control points are all up on slide three. Uh you can just copy one of those tokens uh over and uh make a fourth one. Okay. And uh you now have four control points. What happens when Lady Lizard says that and then just flat out fails. Like it just doesn't work. What 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 happens? Um what do we think a cyberpunk taser would look like? How how has this been modified? Um I think it's probably one of the grunts, right? Yeah. And I I think it's almost like a cattle prod like the batons that they have. There's just like this crack noise and the end of it like lights up. With like a purple energy. Yes. So do you just get this lady lizard just get jammed in the ribs with uh, completely, and then like he crumples kind of like you know like when you get hit in the stomach you double <laughs> over and then yeah and then they crumple to the ground. All it's right. Not a good look. Uh, I think following that, uh, farewell stands up. And I don't think that they're going to <laughs> unleash the giant right now because it would it would there are deleterious effects it would have on on the diner right yeah we like uh, this place yeah we do like this place um, Danny, no <laughs> uh, so I think what is going to happen though. The, the diner's not going to do be doing great, I don't think. But I think that there is, um, I think on the wall above us, there's an old Warhammer. And I think that uh, Farwell is just going to stand up and grab the Warhammer. And uh, I've added that to my, to my gear and just two-handed swing it at one of the grunts. Uh with the intent of like knocking them through a window or, or getting them out of the picture. Um, so what difficulty does that sound like? You're going after the grunts. Mm -hmm. So not overly difficult. My heart says a five. They're grunts. They're meant to be beat up. Okay. How's that feel to everybody else? I was going to say like three or four, because after after seeing Lady Lizard tase, like you might be a little angry, you know, your bum yeah, bonded yeah. might be Ooh, like, what the it? heck? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go with a four then. Um, so the detail I'm going to use is uh, Farwell's excellent detail. Power is used to help. Uh, and I get a bonus die because of the Warhammer, because uh, it's now a piece of gear that is helping me. Oh, so that means nice. I get to roll 11 dice for this. Uh, oh so my God. I'm rolling that in the channel here. Uh, Eleven D six equals, and of course I typed it wrong. <laughs> Oops. Poly space eleven D six. Here we go. We need four hits. I got one, two. I got two. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. I'm trying to decide. I really don't like how that feels so i'm gonna spend the control point 
Uh, and the detail I'm going to highlight is one that the diner has uh, itself, which is the tchotchkes and knickknacks on the wall, including weapons and armor. Like, I've got a fucking war hammer. <laughs> and that's, like, not the kind of thing that riot cops should be. Like, a riot shield is all good until there's 15 pounds of metal on the end of a stick swinging straight at it. Plus momentum, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. Pl- plus momentum. So I'm going to spend... Uh, a control point and I just realized that I need to put control points under my character so I actually have a way to track those <laughs> to do, do, do so spend a control point I'm gonna re-roll my misses so I only got two hits so that means I get to re-roll nine dice so 96 and <laughs> that's one more hit oh um, Oof. y'all, Successful I need you to cops? tell me what happens when this riot cop just, like, I'm going to succeed, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what, what's the thing that happens to Farwell that is unexpected in this? Like the cop's going to get taken out. It's a successful action, but at a cost. So like, what is this reverberation of this hit like? Well, Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, I mean, I don't know how, how well practiced you are with wielding big ass hammers, but Apparently like what's not very <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like JRPG characters that like kinda comically always have these overly large hammers and what tends to happen is like they'll slam down, but then like the rest of their body kinda goes up because they're mm-hmm. not expecting the weight of this. And I think it kinda like trips you up and you get knocked prone. All right. So yeah, the shot goes You're up my cool. arms. I'm not I'm not used to the momentum. I'm completely off balance. I do knock this like it's not nearly as impre- as impressive as me the player wanted it to be like I wanted this this grunt to go through the window. Um but I'm going to get knocked to the ground. Uh grunt will say grunt 2 is the one that tased Lady Lizard. Grunt 2 is taken out. Um yeah. the impact of the hammer like knocks them back and their head hits the wall and they just slump to the ground. Uh, unconscious but I'm also on the floor uh, and that means that Farwell has a glitch die now uh, because that's the difference between what I got and what I needed so Mm -hmm. this whole time uh, once this happened he uh, Haskell looked like to the side and then just not blinking nothing just staring at Mac with a please tell me Please tell me this isn't you look. Yeah, they they make eye contact and they've kept eye contact, but you just can kind of see like, oh, this shit, this was not supposed to happen. So uh, Haskell's going to get up and I would like to uh, change uh, uh, one of the pieces of gear. Okay. Because I, I, I like... Uh, I like what B said about the uh, like the halo kind of uh, sword. So I think since Haskell's an X RPB, I think that's what that plasma blade is. It's one of those uh, one of those lieutenant swords that okay. uh, they have. So, so, so Hask- Haskell's had like a secret <sighs> plasma blade this entire time. Yeah, <laughs> that's he's just, and and the thing is like like with with the blades from Halo, it's just like a little baton, but when you activated that plasma blade comes out yeah so, so it's it, just been like a little stick that he has oh god so that means that, that what the what the grunts have is the exact same device it's just the firmware is different so all it does is just it's a stun baton yeah. and then when you get promoted it gets upgraded and yeah. it becomes so it's, a it's, <laughs> fucking plasma it's like sword. it's actually yeah it's one of those collapsible blades i mean collapsible nightsticks mm-hmm. um so when you're when you're a grunt all it is is just programmed to emit a, 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 shock, a shock from the tip. Yeah. So, but when yeah, when you're upgraded, then it's reprogrammed to where you just hold the middle of it, and then just like kind of do that flick, and then it uh, activates the blade. So you nice. still have the tasing function, but you also have a new function added to it. Cool. So, uh, what does what does Haskell do with with this? So seeing. Uh, Sing Lady Lizard go down. Um, and then 
uh, Farwell kind of eat it. Uh, Haskell, uh, can we make this kind of like a like a we had a moment of like oh shit things are gonna go down and we're like we do something in unison so like when you activate it as well like I activate it as well but yours is like blue and mine's like red and we're about to do some like <laughs> yeah some so buddy I co- think some buddy cop bullshit <laughs> yeah yeah I think what happens is uh now this is depending on how how crazy you let me uh be uh. So how far was uh, Lady Lizard dropped from the group? Oh, feet. Feet? Okay. Yeah. So what I want to do is, because uh, I, I don't think these tables are uh, like welded to the ground or anything. No, no. I think all. they're just tables. Yeah. So Haskell's massive hulking form is going to, uh, like after getting that confirmation that it wasn't a setup by Mac, is just going to kind of like uh like changes this is all happening in like seconds mm-hmm. but they're having a whole ass conversation <laughs> like he's just like was this you and he's like no it wasn't me and he's like then you know what we got to do and, and so he takes the table with one hand and uh just tosses it to land between uh lady lizard and the agents to create like a, a barricade mm-hmm you know, to protect them. And then uh uh him and him and Mac walk out away from the chairs and just in unison just just flick that blade out and just <laughs> Cool, is that it? I mean you like, like you can you can act um, on because because you have to take a risky action and roll the dice yes. to get a mark against one Actually, of the opponents. You know what? I would like to go back and instead of putting that table between, I want to launch the table at them. Yeah, you do. All right. Uh, so Ooh. that seems not too difficult, like a three, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, because because well, yeah. the because the thing about this game is if you double the needed hits, right? If you mm-hmm. happen to get six, then you get two successes, so you can make two marks. So like depending on how well you do, you could have a real impact here. I, I want to say three, but at the same time, uh, I don't know if it's going to be an added, added difficulty to avoid um, Farwell, who's on the ground right now. No, nah, don't, wor- don't worry about that. That's You're right. overthinking it. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Because it's not, I'm not aiming for one person. I am literally just launching a, a table through this diner yeah so. you are this this is an action movie don't worry about the, the right, collateral so um what detail are you gonna use i mean waste not want not <laughs> I'm, I'm using that whole table that's right <laughs> all, right, all right so that is gonna be 10 uh let me roll that Welcome back, B. I'm throwing a whole ass table. The an entire table? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mac and Haskell had a had a buddy cop moment of like yep. zoom, zoom, zoom. launch the yes. table and they both pulled energy blades that match what the lieutenants have. Oh, that's they're so different cute. colors. Yeah. All right. Oh my goodness. That is what I need sixes or fives as well. Fives and sixes. Oh, then I have three successes. Great, you hit on exactly what you needed. Now, nice. does the table go toward one of the grunts, or does the table hit one of the lieutenants? Uh, no, he's wiping out the grunts first. All right, grunt number three is down. Describe what the table does to him. <laughs> Just, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm assuming, so they're kind of spread out. Like, if, if I'm looking, if I'm thinking of, uh, like, how they're coming out tactically, it would have been the four grunts in, like, a, a small kind of arc. And then the two lieutenants behind them. Yep. So with uh, with Farwell taking out, I want to assume it's you know if we're doing it by number because I think you said Grunt two, so that would be the second from the left. So then there's uh, I think he's just gonna take off that last one separated and just throw it. To, oh, oh, camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. I was like, I, I looked down and I was like, I'm fading. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just going to kind of like unintentionally pin that guy to the wall. 
and just you know just launch the table it hits that agent they're just slammed up against the wall and just body and table hit the ground and neither move okay awesome yeah so um the the side of the arc that defensive arc that's closest to us is gone the other two are sort mm-hmm. of facing the other the other direction the lieutenants are now sort of exposed because they're they're two grunt shields down uh what do we got mac uh, I think as that maneuver is happening, um, Mac is actually very perturbed because the RPB has raided his great auntie's uh, diner. And like, we don't do business. Like, this is just a diner. This is a family owned diner. And Mac is pissed. Um, so I think during this whole maneuver, when Haskell uh, throws the table, and it lands and it hits one of the grunts. I think what Mac is going to do is he's going to try to kick the table and then have it launch right into Lieutenant Number One that's exposed mm-hmm. and try to shove them all the way up against the wall, like okay. power kick the table. Yeah, um, that reads to me as like a two, right? Because the the if the grunt had been in front of them, that would have been harder because you would have had to like get around this other person, but. The lieutenants aren't wearing the same kind of thick, heavy armor. They rely on those swords a lot more. Mm. So does that read okay to everybody else? Yeah. I say, I don't know, two or maybe a three, because they are they are more uh, skilled than the grunts. So okay. I think they'd be more adept. That's why they don't wear the uh, heavy armor, because gotcha. they're more agile. And they got able that to, mobility. Yeah. Okay. You want to give that a three then? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Danny, what detail are you going to use? Yeah, I'm rolling. Uh, that's my great auntie's diner. You don't, you don't mess with this. <laughs> that's so I'm right. rolling ten. Uh, do I get anything special for having Haskell set me up with the table? Uh, yeah, get get a. It's counted as a gear as a as a gear die, right? So okay. uh, you're hmm. gonna add one to your pool. So okay, so eleven d sixes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's it may not go as great as yeah. you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, one, two, three, four. Four. Still, you got it. Um, yeah. Now you can still roll a control point if you want to try for doubling it up and getting two marks on the lieutenant. Yeah, I'll spend a control point, and then I think after after I do this power kick against the table and it pushes the lieutenant back, and and uh, Mac can see like, oh, the lieutenant's kind of stopping it. Mm-hmm. He's going to uh, drop his shoulder and then ram it into him, and like push even harder up against the wall so like following up against it all right so you get to re-roll your misses uh so that means you get to roll seven dice and if you get any sixes on this those explode so you get to roll them again Ooh, okay yeah and i'm getting rid of so control points are by player not by character so i'm getting rid of uh control points on both the character sheets where we had them for tracking oh okay yeah all right so 76 um so I have five and a six. Okay. Uh, so that's two more successes, but then I get to roll one d6. Yes, yeah, so you get to roll the six again. Uh, so you're at six hits total. Uh, that's a two. So. Okay. Uh, but that does two. Uh, that's two successes against the uh, one of the RPB lieutenants. So describe what that looks like uh, with the table flying in, the sort of deflection, and then what your shoulder check does. Yeah, so the the table flies from uh from Haskell and knocks over one of the grunts and Mac uh kind of does this power kick like right when that table lands and kicks it right into one of the lieutenants and starts pushing them back but he sees that that the um lieutenant starts fighting back so almost like in Mac's uh shoes there's almost like these red boosters um and she drops her <laughs> shoulder and just uh activates those boosters and rams the lieutenant uh and pins pins the lieutenant up against the wall um of of the diner uh, between the table and the diner nice uh on max gear go ahead and write booster shoes (laughs) (laughs) and an an energy sword because of course uh so it is now time for the bad guys to go uh so the grunts each get an action and then um Right, I just uh, re-remembered the the lieutenants each get uh, half as many actions as there are of us because they're not major threats, right? Mm. So each lieutenant gets to do two things. 
Um, so what do the grunts do? Let's start with them. We got two grunts left. We do. And um, the things that they do, they just do. You get to narratively say what happens. And it, if, if it affects one of our characters, it assigns them glitch dice that they have to mm. roll on their next action. That's it's it's not direct damage. It's the potential for complication. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So uh, we just get to say what they do. What bad shit happens. I'm assuming one of the grunts, uh, they try to get to the opposite side to make sure nobody leaves. Okay. So they're blocking like the back door exit um, and keeping an eye out for any other people that are trying to come in or leave. Okay. Yeah. So they're they're isolating the situation. Yeah. Cool. What's the other grunt do? The other one's an asshole. Uh, so he's just, uh, they're just going to start smashing the display case. Okay. Mm. Sorry, mm. Auntie. Uh, I think that that is going to give all of us a glitch die uh, yeah. as it's like making the terrain. Like there's now broken glass flying everywhere and cake batter and, and whatnot. <laughs> pastry <laughs> bits. Yeah, but not batter. It, they're cooked things, <laughs> but bits of pastry. Yeah. Um, so everyone on your characters, uh, add one glitch die to your pool. Yep. Um, I think that the lieutenant that mac like pinned to the wall i think the first thing he does is that his what armor he is wearing is like built for this and it like you hear this high-pitched whine and it's like an electric pulse goes off and just blasts just pushes uh mac away right like you don't get to pin one of these guys it just poof just straight back. Um, and because that lieutenant has two boxes left, that's going to be two glitch dice. So okay. uh, Mac adds two glitch dice to their total. Uh, that lieutenant has one more action and the other lieutenant has two. I imagine Mac, like when, when it gets pushed back, uh, falls into Haskell's big belly and yeah. doesn't fall all the way down, but just kind of bounces yeah. off and is like shaken up a little bit. So I would, you know, for a little flavor, once this dude's destroying the uh, the the display case, I think with everything flying all around, uh, as soon as uh, Mac bounces off uh, Haskell's stomach, you see like the camera pans up to Haskell. And he looks down, nods, holds his hand out, and like a cinnamon roll hits, and he's like, "Oh." <laughs> Brush a little glass off of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want it to be crunchy. All right, B, what's the first action for the second lieutenant? Ooh. I think, did we, we didn't really detail, but were there any other people in here? Um. So with the grunt going to close the back door off so no one can get in or out, I get mm -hmm. the impression that we were coming in just a little bit before open. Okay. Right, so... So I, I, I don't I, I don't get anything narratively from there being innocent bystanders harmed by this. Yeah. So let's okay. just say there was no one else in the in the diner. Perfect. Um I think this butt face then is gonna stomp towards uh Mac and friend and probably try to start pummeling with that energy sword. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what that looks like because I'm trying to reimagine what the last positions of those two were. Uh, uh, you can just say that it happens. Like it doesn't. Okay. Like, the lieutenant just wades in and starts beating around. Um, <laughs> and in fact, that can be both actions with four glitch dice attached to each. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so, so that's Mac and Haskell with that were targeted Sorry, by that. Friends. Yep. That's yep. that's that's how this goes. Um, the immediate attackers. They, cool. they kicked right. a table. Yeah. <laughs> like four to me and four no, to eight to you eight. and eight no, no, no. to me. No, no, no. Four to you and four to. Okay. Oh, two, I thought he was yeah, like one attack to me, one attack to you. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Thank God, because I was just about to just yeah. uh, close yeah, no. my camera and cry at these nine <laughs> dice. But, yeah, that, you know. that'd be a lot. Like this, this, ain't, this ain't a great situation, but it's not as bad as that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then Danny, what is the second action for that first lieutenant? Um, I think this first lieutenant. Um. I think their their whole 
mission. Oh, did you have something? You... Oh, I just <laughs> thought of something. Uh, that, that what what Tracy said earlier. Um, I like I would I would like to see like that after the table hits and the uh the like the the reverb comes off and pushes everything back. Um, as that second lieutenant comes and starts attacking us, this you know this shit cake here is like, all right, we need to grab a hostage. So they see. Oh, little defenseless Granny Gertrude in the corner and starts walking towards her, not knowing what a badass she is. So he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna grab this old lady, and we're gonna we're gonna have us a hostage. They're gonna do what I do what I say." And then, because uh, Tracy mentioned that you know she she can kick some ass and take names, mm -hmm. so you know this will give this will give that opportunity for her to be like, "Oh no," <laughs> and. <laughs> like stuff to go down and all of a sudden we're like we're fighting this one lieutenant and then all of a sudden the other one just gets launched across the room does that work for you danny yeah yeah that's okay perfect. so i think then narratively speaking um farwell and lady lizard and i'm gonna guess haskell as well don't mm -hmm. know how capable gertrude mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. So the 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 danger, like the threat of that, I think is going to give each of us another glitch die. I don't think Mac gets another glitch die because oh, Mac knows so that funny. Gertrude can 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 hang. Uh, in yeah. fact, I think that uh, Mac, you take a glitch die away actually from your pool because you're that. like, oh yeah, Gertrude's got this one. Yeah, <laughs> Gertrude has run this business for like sixty years. Yeah, they yeah. know what's up. Exactly. All right, so that brings us to the end of that round of uh, of combat. And with that, uh, we are going to take our break because we're a little bit past time for that. Uh, we're going to keep it short this time. But um, when we come back in about five minutes or so, uh, it's going to be Lady Lizard's turn to act Ooh. in this conflict. Uh, there's going to be some glitch dice rolled. There's going to be some, some glass swept away. We're going to see what happens. Uh, so... Uh, hang in there in the chat and join us back here in about five minutes as we take a little a, a little stretch and we come back to see what happens.
And we are back. We are in the middle of the diner. There are RPB agents all around. And it's time to see what Lady Lizard is going to bring to the party. All right. So I I think I had previously kind of described them wearing this like really elaborate pantsuit that kind of looks like a dress from a distance. Um, very, very functional as far as active combat is considered. Um, so there, she's kind of doubled over and enough time has passed that he's able to get his breath again. And now not only fueled with the rage of being struck, frustrated that these are the people that are going to be invading the bubble and then furiated at the fact that these assholes would take a little old person hostage. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Line rage. Nope. Um, (laughs) So, Lady Lizard, um, let me peek what I had decided. Um, oh, fucking, fucking shit. I think as the leader of the bubble, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> as the leader of the bubble, it is their duty to protect those who cannot be protected themselves, and they are going to run with the intent to, it's kind of like a running grab motion to grab the neck of one of the lieutenants and crush um, the one that was trying to grab Gertrude. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what detail are you going to use for that? Oh, leader of the bubble. Okay. And (laughs) I don't think anything. I got some gear. Um, Yeah, but nothing in Dragon Clan helps with that. Um, No, this is the opposite of Dragon Clan stuff. I will say DJ, when you, uh, when it comes back to Haskell's action, check out your bear stuff. Because you've got some 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 bear moves that can. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking up right now. Because I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah, and unfortunately, Mac does not have any fancy moves because Mac is not uh, a member of the resistance. Uh, So, uh, if if you think of anything that maybe an RPB cop who's kind of semi collaborating might might get bonus dice on or get to set some successes, Danny, let me know and we'll 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 roll with it. Um, So, ten dice plus what gear there be? Uh, my iron gloves of crushing <laughs> iron gloves of crushing fantastic it's a good thing for a leader to have uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so 11d6 11d6 and you're running across the diner and you are attempting to get to the throat of this rpb lieutenant who we have already established is trained in combat yeah um not as um uh not wearing like heavy armor they got light armor right they do have light armor um this is feeling like a four to me because now they know they're on alert right now they know there's some shit going down how does that feel to to everybody Hmm? yeah i think yeah yeah i think they normally would be harder but maybe their their direction is towards gertrude rather than lady lizard coming at them I like that. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Then it's going to be uh, four successes needed. And Lady Lizard, you're also going to roll your two glitch dice Oof. as a separate pool to clear those out. So uh, let's see your 11d6 first. Okay, one, two, three, four. Four. So you got the successes you needed. Fantastic. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, so nothing to worry about there. And now roll your 2d6. Two hits. Two hits. Oh, both glitch dice came up. So I think that hurts somebody else. It does hurt somebody else. Um, oh, friends. So, so that is a a minor complication to an ally. Um, so hmm. who is this going to affect? You get to decide as the player, B. Who was on the ground still? Was it Haskell or Mac? Oh, it was. Oh, yep. shit. Yeah, it was uh it was Farwell. Uh, Farwell, thank you. Um uh so for those who are watching, uh in the text it says uh, examples of uh mechanical complications. So on the next risky risky action the character takes, they roll one less die in their die pool, right? So you just sort of give them a, a small hindrance. Uh or they drop what they were holding and it's unavailable until recovered, right? So minor's not like the worst thing in the world, but it definitely it's it's about a one die of effect. Hmm. I think so. There's a struggle. You don't just get to strangle somebody, and they're like, "Yeah, cool, thank you." Mm-hmm. Um. 
So this lieutenant, like, they're fighting back, they're they're flailing their limbs with this energy sword kind of brandishing, mm -hmm. um, and Haskell being prone and not as, or um, Farwell being prone and not, uh, not able to kind of, like, really react appropriately, I think, ooh, what would be in the way? What kind of uh, gumball machine? I think there's something that is struck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. by this lieutenant and it lands and falls on you um okay maybe it's that cake that was just not i like the eaten. idea of a gumball machine like the yeah. top of it getting cut off and the glass dome just sort of oof, just hitting me right in the chest um yeah so that's going to take one die away from my next uh my next die pool farwell stands up um and you did get one success on lieutenant number two uh so that's marked uh on them Thank so you. so basically it's like you did not choke the life out of them but it's like claw marks and scratches around oh, yeah. around their neck there's gonna be bruising tomorrow if they survive yeah. um so farwell is really resisting the temptation to go all out here because this is extremely frustrating but at the same time seeing gertrude like wrapped up in all of this and like looking down at the thing that literally hit them in the chest, this the the head of this gumball machine. It's like, okay, this is not my space. I can't just let the giant come out, even though that would end this. It would also ruin this place. Like it's that's not a that's not a small thing. So there's there's an internal conversation between uh, Farwell Bane's daughter. And Krelg the Mighty. Um, fortunately, Krelg is like an intellectually oriented giant, not like the physical smashy type of thing. Um, so lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Farwell stands up and the, the gumball top, machine top, is in one hand. I think they gently set it down in like the display case, right? There's like a hole Aww. and they just set it to the side. A little respect. And then they heft this Warhammer again. Um, and that other lieutenant is still nearby. Lieutenant number one is still within range. Uh, and so since the grunts are doing whatever and they're kind of off to the side away from where Farwell is, Farwell is going to step to this lieutenant. Um, what do you all want for the difficulty of a baseball swing of a Warhammer at an RPB lieutenant who has an energy sword. Oh my and, God. Uh... And shocky and shocky armor. Well, I think Farwell kind of understands now the physics. So maybe they're a little bit better at okay. swinging at least. I don't know. Versus a lieutenant versus a grunt. No, I gotta say this has been happening since we started playing, but I always want to pick the highest numbers. Danny, you always talk me down. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just want to see this lieutenant get smashed in the yeah. face. <laughs> it would be really satisfying, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so maybe four or five? Thank you. We're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's let's roll with a four because that is in keeping with the sort of difficulty we've been using for the yeah, lieutenants so like far. That. Um, okay. So that is um, going to be using... Power is used to help. That's still the detail I think Farwell is bringing to bear here. Cause that's the, the number 10 detail plus one because of the Warhammer, minus one because of the effects of effects of the glitch die. Mm. Um, and Farwell also has three glitch dice of their own. Ooh, no so um, we're going to be rolling those pools separately. So first of all, it's 10 dice. So, one two three four four successes so a, nice. just a, a, a nice solid uh hit on the good, good, lieutenant good. and two successes on the glitch dice um so i really appreciated danny how you said that you thought that farwell had the hang of this warhammer <laughs> uh, I think in other circumstances that might have been the case, but you had that RPB grunt like fucking with this display case with all the pastries in it. Mm -hmm. And I think the handle of the Warhammer got like icing on it Ooh. or pastry cream. Right. Oh my God. 
so the the swing is successful and the warhammer hits this agent just smack in the chest like a deep thud knocks him back to the wall but when they hit the back of the wall their armor triggers that grapple reflex again and the electric pulse like shoots out and it hits the head of the warhammer which sends it flying across the room and the head of it doesn't hit anybody because this is just a minor this is a minor uh consequence not not anything uh damaging but i think the the haft of the warhammer it's flying sideways and smacks haskell right across the chest just a solid th- ooh, ooh. yeah like and- <laughs> it goes and, and Mac sees it and goes, Oh, <laughs> like it wasn't going to hit Mac at all, but it threatened the height. It hit the hair. Yeah. The <laughs> hair. Yeah. Oh! The hair. <laughs> and then it pulled right into Haskell. Yeah. And so Haskell, you're going to take, you're going to uh, have one less die on your next uh, oh. action pool because of that, uh, that yeah. solid smack. Um, and it, there's going to be a welt across your chest. Mm-hmm. Like if you, if you pull that shirt aside, it's just going to be, notice it. yeah can haskell take off her shirt well, i mean <laughs> i'm like if haskell it gets is. to it man it just just uh speaking of it's haskell's turn okay so this is definitely going to be a uh fun and productive turn and not bad for haskell whatsoever with one <laughs> less die and six glitch die so uh yeah so I think uh, with everything going on, um, I think, you know, with this team tactic, um, he he wants to just double down on that, uh, the lieutenant that just got uh, hammered. Mm-hmm. So uh, they will just kind of charge. Actually, what's going to happen, um, I want to use this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, she'll use the session ability. Uh, no, the scene ability. Uh, bait. So, uh... Can I make a suggestion? Yes. There's only one box left on that lieutenant. Mm -hmm. If you want them to stand down and stop fighting so you can question them, you can use Use posture, posture. which Mm -hmm. allows you to ignore any glitch dice on the roll. Oh. So you get to ignore all six of your glitch dice and it clears them. Because well, you know, if I must. <laughs> because <laughs> because you're big and beefy. Like you're not gonna yeah. let someone else's shit mess with you. Like So okay. So we'll we'll do posture and what'll happen is uh as the, the hammer bounces off mm-hmm. and you know the, the lieutenant looks smug, it starts flying and they see it going towards Mac. Mac dodges out of the way hits Haskell and the 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 handle just snaps right on his chest and he's like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> the pecs of and glory start, yeah yes! just he just sits there and just just sits there and looks and goes mm, 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 and just starts walking towards blade out menacingly walking towards this lieutenant can the shirt get caught on the display case and just tear off haskell uh, as they're walking by <laughs> i think i think to add to it it'll it'll get caught and rip uh-huh nice and then haskell like gets there notices it's ripped and goes oh <laughs> and it just to add to the intimidation just <laughs> And just stands there, towering over this lieutenant, bare-chested, bare Goliath of a human being, staring at them to intimidate them. Awesome. Uh, Given the context, what do we think the difficulty of intimidating an RPB lieutenant is? With with pecs like that, I don't know, man. Yeah, I think Uh, I I I should get six die per (laughs) peck. Each pack um, lowers the difficulty by two. <laughs> <laughs> Titties out makes it easier. There you go. Uh, I think these lieutenants are like die hard. So I think mm-hmm. it'd be pretty hard. Like even when their life's at stake, they're like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Six. Yeah, you can do six. 
Does that seem? You know, I love the high numbers. I'm not gonna yeah. say no. Yeah, I, mean, I think if if not for the context of the Warhammer snapping off, yeah, and just like that, only further angering uh, Haskell, it probably would have been an eight. But <laughs> I think I think contextually six, you know, that brings it down a little bit. So yeah. I like it. Uh, so whatever you do, you are going to be minus one die to your die pool yes. because of that. But do you have any gear Thankfully, that you can bring? don't have any glitch die. You have uh, Yeah. Oh, I'm using uh, Plasma Blade. That's oh, out yeah. and at the ready. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think I think after that, yeah, that's, that's when she ripped off the shirt and just uh, with one hand and then still had the Plasma Blade there ready. And it's just like just breathing heavily over this person just like 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 in an anime instead of just like staring down at them just the head is straight and eyes are just looking down at them and just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're you're in the shadow of the one yellow light in the middle of the diner <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cool uh what detail are you gonna use all right um i think man i want to use one of the big ones but I think the detail I'm gonna have that most relates to it is uh, revenge isn't the best thing served cold. Cause okay, you you want to bring five dice? I, for, just just for five for, dice to a six die party. I'm just saying for the uh, like I can't can't I, really think of a way to justify waste not want not or uh, did I, you eat today? I respect it. I, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm just making like, sure I, it's that... terrible. I want to be like, oh well, he, he uses the shirt to make a whip and pop some, I, uh, like something like that. But just <laughs> the the reality of it is, sadly, there's just I can't I can't think of it. I I have massive yeah. respect for it. I just want to make sure that those who are watching along uh, gather the implications of this because oh, yeah. it's, it you can take you can take success at a cost. It mm. just, I mean, that means that cost is it, it's gonna be up there. Yes. What if so. Haskell says, Did you eat today? How about a knuckle sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Count it. I love it. I, I, yes. I, I'll, I, I'll let Thank that ride. You. That's <laughs> Can oh, you? Danny, you brilliant, brilliant, oh. brilliant person. Okay, oh man, okay, so yeah. Seven dice. I will drop that fantastic uh, one, uh, uh, threat there. Uh, can and, we uh, can we hear it in Haskell's growl, please? Oh, of course. Uh, so he walks up. Did you eat today? Because you're about to eat a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> and then, uh, right. yeah, let's roll them down. Seven yeah. dice. Let's see it. All right. Uh. Holly, seven, no, six, D6. Plus the energy sword, so seven. Oh, seven, okay, 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 six, or seven, D6. Okay, come on. <clears throat> I got two successes. And you needed six, so. Yep, uh, um, I'm going to use a control point. Okay, what detail are you going to yeah. highlight? now is when you can do revenge right yeah yeah i think we'll 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 do the revenge then and then uh yeah so that'll let me roll those five that i failed on yep it'll let you roll those five to get four and sixes explode okay holy come on give me that goodness give me that goodness yeah 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 (sighs) i got two more so that's four uh, on a six, um, so I get two glitch dice. Yep, you gotta take the success at a cost. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, what does what does the cost look like? Like, what does it look like for Haskell to get this but not clean? Um, I think you know comes up and they do that big uh you know intimidation attempt, and the the lieutenants being who they are you know, loyal to the end kind of thing. You know, they they believe that, you know, they're brainwashed into the RPB is just the one all be all everybody else are just, you know, uh, beneath them. Mm-hmm. So they're thinking, okay, this, this, you know, th- th- uh, this, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, for betrayal. Um, 
Traitor. Is Insult? Traitor, thank you. Uh, so this traitor here thinks they can uh, intimidate me. I'm going to show them. So, uh, you know, they look up at Haskell and smile. And uh, I think what they'll do is they will uh, kind of just like like deactivate their sword mm -hmm. and then like step towards Haskell and hit themselves with the taser function to trigger the uh the 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 reverber the the, the you know what I'm talking about <laughs> yeah, from yeah. The, the, the armor shock, the shock yeah, protection yeah yeah the shock protection so they do that to like thinking it's just going to boom and knock Haskell back and it does that like hits Haskell Haskell like leans back but then just comes back like the world's angriest uh uh wavy inflatable arm flailing two man uh-huh and then uh yeah just kind of like grabs not even a neck or anything just grabs their face and then that whole like that's when everything sets in and they're like huh i have made a mistake and that's the fourth box for that mm. lieutenant. So they're hey. out of this conflict, right? So, so we have narrative control over them. They're not going to figure into any of the die rolling uh, henceforth. Mac, what so, you got? Oh, mm -hmm. well, oh real sorry. quick. I wanted yeah. to ask. So uh, since that success at a cost, I assume I took damage from that, you know, that, that shock shockout. Face. Okay, there yeah. we go. Thank right. you. Right, because you've you've got that coursing through you, mm -hmm. and whether it eventuates into anything, we find out on the next roll. Yeah, so. perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right. I think while this is going on with Haskell, um, at this moment, Mac looks over and sees this grunt just tearing through his great auntie's display case, mm -hmm. and you kind of see something just like a ding switch, and uh. He's going to pull out a booster boomerang, so it's like a high power speed boomerang, and he's just going to fling it behind his back to try to, like, knock over uh, grunt number four. Nice. Uh, detail you're using? Uh, I it's, My great auntie owns this diner. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ten dice plus one for the boomerang. Uh, three is what we used for the grunts previously, so let's just keep that intact. And Let me use the, uh, the Discord channel. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> the dice are not in our favor today. Wow. Uh uh. Ah, uh, so that's two. Uh yeah. Let me use a control point. I'll take. I'll <laughs> use it. Okay. Yeah, because if if you do really well, you could take out both grunts with that's, the one. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what yeah, I was yeah. trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So, so what what detail are you gonna highlight with the use of that control point? Um. <laughs> I think part of why Mac is so pissed is because she has an insatiable sweet tooth. And it's like, okay, not only are you messing up the glass case, you're tearing through my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And yeah. Mac is You not got glass in my lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As you think of that, you you messed up with my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You just just somewhere in the ethos you hear just a mm. <laughs> All right. Um, so do I get to roll all nine yes. that I missed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then, oh my gosh, <laughs> my a single oh, no. uh, oh. which is cool. Uh, and then I have to roll all my glitch dice as well. Uh, yes, you do. Cool. Watch, there's gonna be like <laughs> nineteen million <Yeah>. uh, successes. <laughs> but at least I knock out one grunt. But let's you see. You do. Um, one one success from there okay so that is a minor complication to yourself yeah i think that booster boomerang like mac wanted to be as cool as haskell like, like <laughs> trying to match that energy mm -hmm. tosses this boomerang knocks out the grunt and then holds up her hand to try to catch the boomerang and then the boomerang misses and just knocks them over the head <laughs> um not as uh, cool and the boomerang just kind of like drops well you could you could also just have it completely go by your hand and break through a window and just keep going and just lose the boomerang. <laughs> just never again. I'll lose, I'll lose <laughs> my boomerang. Booster boomerang. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Five so, minutes later, still waiting for it. Like, <laughs> oh. uh, Grunt number four, knocked upside the head, 
out of the out of, out of commission. So we have the one grunt who's back by the door, and we have Lieutenant Number Two. It is now time for threat actions. Mm-hmm. So, what does Grunt Number Three do? I like to imagine maybe this was the grunt that was securing the perimeter. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, so, like, she's gonna pop her head back in to be like, "Hey, coast is clear." <laughs> and uh, very much like uh, Troy bringing in the pizza, everything was on fire. There was glass everywhere. A lot of the uh, RPB folks are down. Um, hmm. So, like, how do we think they would react in this situation? With with that, almost like a I don't get pay- paid enough for this. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's it's either that or it's extreme force, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fight or flight. What do we think? Uh... I'm thinking narratively, like the other three were like ready to fight, but this grunt's like, I'll uh, I'll go keep watch. A lieutenant then... is down as well. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. you think they just bolt? Like, yeah. Okay, grunt three is out of the picture. Uh, lieutenant number two gets two actions. What does she do? Uh... Let's see. She's got Granny, Gertrude, or mm-hmm. uh, Auntie Gertrude. Auntie. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh... Man, at this point, they're they're really the only one left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, do you think they? I I think maybe they move into like full hostage negotiation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're like, I need to get out of here. We've got one of theirs. They've got one of ours. So I think that actually is probably a good point to put a pin in this session for the day. Since we got about 10 minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Can can it be like where you like have like your your crook your arm around like little auntie auntie Gertrude's throat and like the energy sword like pointed at her throat? Mm-hmm. I just I mm-hmm. love those like the drop of sweat goes down her face. <laughs> yeah. She seems stressed, but we know. And like and like, Mac knows that Auntie Gertrude could probably get out of this, but that sword is like right it's there, hot. and and she knows when it's too dangerous to try some shit. Yeah. So like. I think that standoff of like Haskell holding this the other lieutenant's face and Auntie Gertrude with the energy sword at her neck is a good a, a good cliffhangery point to to call this session Ooh, and where we can yeah. pick it up next time if that works for everybody. Like it it'll be, you know, Haskell's got this guy and it's just like, "All right, this is over. Just stop." And like everybody turns towards this lieutenant and the lieutenant has their back to everyone and just starts laughing and then turns around. <laughs> and that's when they see uh, auntie sit and held up with the, the blade to their throat. Sure. And yeah, we'll talk. that is beautiful. Oh, I ah. hate it, but I love it. Fantastic. As we close out this session, B, tell the people who you are. Remind them where they can find you. Yes, as always, I'm your non-binary busy bee. You can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I am a podcaster, streamer, and community manager of D&D Adventures League. I think I'm streaming D&D tonight. It might actually be an Adventures League game. There's something for charity that I agreed to. Not clear on what it is, where it is, or how it will be. But if you follow me on Twitter, you'll learn right alongside me. <laughs> All right, DJ. All right, so I I will admit I've been super jealous of everybody's like intros. You know, busy bee. And, Have you worked you on know, yours? I I thought of something, so I'm <gasps> okay. gonna try. I'm gonna try it. We're just gonna throw it out there and you know see how it how it how it how it resonates. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I am Big B's, the harbinger of hype. Ah, oh, broke my headphones. Well, those are- <laughs> so just to prove, uh, yeah. <laughs> too much hype. The headphones so can even take much. it. Oh my goodness. I'm too That's hyped how you know good. it was a good intro. That's right. So, outro? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so you can catch me uh, on my channel at Big Underscore Bees. I'm actually going to go live soon, uh, do some Elden Ring, because that game is so fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you can catch me on Twitter at Big Bees Underscore, where I like, retweet, and send gift comments on damn near everything I see on my feed. And Danny. What's up, y'all? My name is Danny. I am the Internet's emotional support himbo. You can find me all over the Internet at Brutal Dan. That's Twitter titch. Twi Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. TikTok, <laughs> Twitch, Tic Tac. Uh, I am the community manager for Roll20, and tonight on Roll20's Twitch channel, I will be on an actual play of Chris Spivey's Haunted West. So if y'all like to yeez and haws, I'll see y'all tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And I am Tracy Barnett. I am your host and your narrator here on the One Shot Podcast Network. A big thank you, by the way, to One Shot for hosting these streams. I greatly appreciate having the, uh, the extra potential audience. It is a huge boost to Iron Edda and what we're doing here. If you enjoyed this, there is a podcast form of this called Iron Edda Reforged Season 1 puppet strings that you can find if you search for iron edda reforged on any podcatcher that you use b zelda is in that game with me uh we have posted our penultimate session today Ooh. the final session the fall of tear is next week yes. so that will wrap that up then there will be a small break on that feed while i get the audio from these actual plays prepped for podcast release uh and then we'll see what's going to happen to the feed after that but you can find me on twitter anywhere at the other tracy and you can uh, copy that link real quick i'm going to put it into the chat there's me on twitter for the chat and if you like this game it is available in alpha form uh soon to be beta form because i'm getting close to finalizing the text and then i will get that laid out and uh update the pdf to beta while i send the text to my editor uh and you can get that on itch for seven dollars we'll get you the rules for what we were playing today uh if you get it now you will get it for cheaper than the beta because at beta it goes up to ten dollars because there's more content you got to pay for more content support um, them support they, them support they, them i'm just gonna like do that I, in the background so that. for everybody to like <laughs> Just kind of subliminal message as you go through. <laughs> so they're like, man, I really want to support them. Damn. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. Uh, we will be back here next week, same time, 9.30 a.m. EST, to figure out what's going to happen with this standoff in the diner and how all of this points to Mimir. Because oh, yeah. we only got seven sessions. The fall mm. of God is going to happen sooner than we think. Thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you next week.